Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate the correlation coefficient, specifically the Pearson's correlation coefficient, which is the most common one and the one you'll learn in your intro or intermediate statistics course. Okay, so let me just uh, talk a little bit about the data we're looking at here. Uh, so this is our x variable and this is our y. We'll just keep it very general. And we have, let's see how many observations here. We have nine observations. Okay, that's just the counter for us. All right, so these are the variables we want to find the correlation between x and y, or the correlation between y and x. Okay, and if you recall, the symbol we use for the Pearson's correlation coefficient is this guy right here, lowercase r. All right, now there is a function in Excel, the coral function, which is short for correlation, that will calculate this guy for us in one shot okay so I'm gonna do it both the quickest way possible and then the long way manual way using Excel as a calc as a fancy calculator if you will so that we see we get the same numbers and this is good if you want to understand what the uh, formula for a correlation coefficient is doing okay the Pearson correlation coefficient so first of all we're gonna need to get a couple things this is X bar and this is the standard deviation of X so basically I'm getting the sample mean and the sample standard deviation of X here and then I'm gonna do the same thing for Y and put that here because we're gonna need these in our calculation of R so first of all actually let us get correlation using the coral function here equals C O R R E L open parentheses and you highlight the X variable comma highlight the Y variable actually you could do it in either order okay so the order that you input the uh, two arguments into the coral function does not make a difference so that's our correlation coefficient 0.5703 Okay. Now let's go about trying to match this number the long way, the manual way. Okay, so let's follow along. We're going to need to get these guys. So to get x bar, I use the average function. Highlight the x's to get the standard deviation, sample standard deviation of x. I use the stdev.s, and the s stands for sample of the X's and I just highlight the X's again okay now if you missed that I'm gonna do it again for the Y's so you can see it again equals average I highlight the Y variable values and to get the sample standard deviation of the Y's I used stdev.s again and highlight the Y values again okay good now we need to make a few columns first of all we want to calculate the Z scores for the X variable so this is what I mean by Z underscore X okay so I'm going to convert my X variable into Z scores using this formula if you remember so Z underscore X that's what I'm attempting to write here equals each X value minus X bar over S of X, the sample standard deviation of X. Okay, so that's what I'm going to calculate here, one by one. And that's so for the first one, 34 will go into this place, 20.11 will be the X bar, and 12.97 will be the sample standard deviation of X, and that number will go here. Then 5 will go into X, and these two guys will come into their rightful places, and so on. And Excel will do this for us if we set up the formula right. Okay? So let's do this. Equals in parentheses X minus X bar. Lock the X bar because we don't want that to change. And I hit the F4 key on the uh, keyboard to get those dollar signs and those dollar signs are absolute val uh, references so it locks uh, th that cell divided by 
S of X and also F4 to lock that. Hit enter. So I've converted 34 into its Z value. And I could just drag this down. Okay. Now let's get the same thing for the Y values. So equals the Y minus the Y bar. Lock that with F4 divided by S of Y, the sample standard deviation of Y and lock that F4. So now I've converted 59 into its Z value using this formula. Z of Y equals Y minus Y bar, which is this guy, divided by S of Y, which is this guy. Okay? This guy and this guy don't change as I go down. This does change right this changes so that's why I lock these two in the formula okay that's why I put these dollar signs around these two guys and not around this one okay hit enter now you could drag this down okay now finally if you recall the formula for R is the sum of the z x is times the z y's divided by n minus 1. So what we, our next step is going to be is to calculate the z x's times the z y's. And we could do that right here. Let's just give it a title so we know what we're doing here. z x's times z y's and let's do equals this guy times this guy and drag that down let me just uh, make this slightly prettier okay so all I did was I multiplied this guy by this guy row by row all right and as you saw in that formula we need the sum of these guys in the numerator divided by n minus 1 so why don't we get the sum and put it right here okay so let's just call this sum so this is going to equal sum and just highlight these guys so the sum we have the numerator now we need to get n minus 1. So let's get n here somewhere. n is equal to 9. Right? That's how many observations we have. 9. You could also use the count function and count any, any of these. And you should get 9. Okay? So we need n minus 1. So n minus 1 will just be simply this guy minus 1 8 so our Pearson correlation coefficient as calculated by us manually so let me write it here uh, calculated manually R is equal to this guy that we got using this table and all these extra columns divided by n minus 1 and let's see if this matches this it's just a case of uh, decimals so let's show more decimals as many as this one's showing so we see we get an exact match 0 0.5703708 0 0.5703708 that's perfect okay so one more thing I would do is to remind you of the formula and the steps we did. So R is equal to the sum of the Z X's times the Z Y's divided by N minus one. The numerator we had to do, we had to get Z X and Z Y separately. And then we had to multiply them together that's this 
and then we had to sum those so that was the sum of this whole column and that's this number right here so r equal to 4.5629 I'm getting that from right here okay divided by as the formula says n minus 1 which is 9 minus 1 8 and then when we calculate that we get 0 0.570378 which is what we got here and it's exactly what the coral function in Excel gets us okay so I hope this was helpful I'm going to do a follow-up video that shows you uh, uh, more of what happens when you take a linear transformation of, uh, of a variable. What happens to the correlation coefficient. Okay, so that's um, something you definitely want to check out. Also, what happens when outliers uh, are present in the data. So be sure to watch those videos. Be sure to subscribe, comment, like, share, and come back soon. Till next time, have a great day.